Joining us now is Dr. Craig McLean, Associate Vice President for Translational Research at the University of Louisville. Thank you so much for joining us. It's a real pleasure to be here today. Your session is called Signaling and Hepatotoxicity. Give us a brief overview. So we have a session this afternoon on signaling and hepatotoxicity and there are really six exciting abstracts. Uh, the first one is one that I'm particularly interested in. It's, uh, it relates to the inflammasome, which is a, a multimeric protein complex uh, that a bunch of things activate, uh, ranging from uric acid to certain fatty acids, bacterial products, but it relates to uh, inducing inflammation, caspase cleavage, and uh, production of interleukin-1 and interleukin-18. And they've shown that a certain uh, receptor, the ranadine receptor, uh, which uh, causes calcium flux, uh, if you block that, uh, you block inflammation. And they showed that uh, first in peritoneal macrophages, and then they went to animal models. So they went to a fulminant model of liver injury induced by galactosamine and endotoxin. And uh, then they used a uh, liver injury model called thiocetamide, where you get scarring or fibrosis in the liver. And, uh, and they used a drug to block uh, uh, this pathway that's actually on the market right now, hmm. something called dantrolene. So uh, this has a huge clinical importance for uh, a variety of types of liver disease. Um, another abstract, uh, uh, and I think that one, that one was from Yale, another one actually from the NIH here, uh, Frank Gonzalez's group, and from Rush in Chicago, looked at uh, CYP2E1 or cytochrome P452E1 um, metabolism and showed how important it was for liver injury and binge drinking, which is a big oh. problem on campus. It is. And uh, so um, in this binge drinking model of liver injury, uh, um, the animals that lacked the CYP2E1 uh, didn't get the toxicity that the regular animals did. And so the regular animals got ulcerations in their intestine, blebs in their intestine, fatty liver, increase in TNF production, mm -hmm. oxidative stress. And uh, so all that was blocked by knocking out the uh, uh, CYP2E1. And if they gave an antioxidant, uh, they got the same effect. Or if they blocked CYP2E1 activity chemically, they got the same good effect. And then they also showed that um, the cannabinoid 1 receptor wasn't involved in this pathway. Um, there are, there's another uh, great uh, paper on the interaction of stellate cells uh, interacting with hepatocytes. This comes from Dr. Gandhi's group in Cincinnati, uh, showing the crosstalk between the liver cell uh, hepatocyte and the stellate cell and producing liver injury and they showed that uh, this is happening through interferon production, interferon beta in the uh, uh, stellate cell. Mm -hmm. And uh, he also showed that uh, um, this substance that he's been working on, augmenter of liver regeneration, correlated best with the liver injury. Uh, better than AST and ALT. Um, kind of wrapping up, there were several other good abstracts, but two uh, relating to bile acid metabolism. And one showed the importance of um, uh, microRNA uh, uh, 21 and its role in liver injury, and the other one uh, showed uh, the importance of uh, PKC delta. Uh, protecting against liver injury through a, a AKT pathway. So the bile acids are kind of coming back uh, as a hot topic in liver injury. Wow. What are, of those, what are the takeaway points you think mm. could lead to clinical advances? Yeah, so the inflammasome pathway is very, very important. Uh, I chaired the, uh, with Dr. Nagy, the federal focus session yesterday, mm -hmm. 
and uh, there we were talking about what are the new drugs that we're going to treat alcoholic hepatitis with. Mm. And uh, two different groups are using inhibitors of interleukin-1, and interleukin-1 is kind of the bad cytokine that's released from the inflammasome. So I think this inflammasome playing a role in liver injury is a really hot thing. Mm. I think the oxidative stress in alcoholic liver disease uh, through the cytochrome P450 metabolism is very important. And we're learning more about the role of bile acids and actually the enteropathic circulation of bile acids and what's that doing to the gut liver axis. So exciting times in liver disease. It sounds like it. And thank you so much for joining us. Thank you very much.